my name is Mike Olbinski. I uh, am a storm chaser, photographer, wedding photographer, and uh, this is kind of what I do for a living. And I love it. Uh, storms especially are um, something that I've loved since I was a kid. And uh, it took me later in life to really figure out uh, something to do with that passion for storms. And so I do a lot of time lapse work, films, and uh, storm photography. And I post my you know, photos everywhere and I get a lot of questions about stuff. And so I wanted to start doing kind of a series of YouTube videos on tutorials and basic ways to um, do this kind of thing from forecasting maybe to how to use your camera, settings, and uh, like today's topic. The biggest question I get most of the time when I post a lightning photo is, did you use a lightning trigger for that? And it always surprises me a little bit because a lot of times people ask that on nighttime photos. So basically, I'll kind of describe what a lightning trigger is and when it's useful. This is the lightning trigger four, and actually this is the official lightning trigger, which is a registered trademark by the guy named Rich who makes this thing. Other ones really should be called lightning sensors, lightning detectors, etc. Because I use this one, I feel free to use the, the word lightning trigger. But basically these things are super simple. There's a sensor on the front, it detects lightning, sends this to your shutter release on your cape on your camera, and tells your camera to take a picture. Pointed at a storm, lightning will flash, tells your camera to go. This basically it. This is the simplest part about shooting lightning with a trigger. The hardest part is getting your camera settings right. But first off, this is, this is the tool, and when is it really good for? People ask about using it at night, like I said. At night, there's really no reason for a trigger, because you can do 10, 15, 20, 30 second exposures, aim it at a storm, and you're gonna more than likely capture way more lightning than you did than you would if you used a lightning trigger. Lightning triggers, for me, are better during the day. That's kind of, to me, what they're made for. During the day when it's, uh, bright out or you know early afternoon but especially up until dusk when it's starting to get a little darker and maybe you can get about a half second or one second exposure that's when it's pretty good after that once it starts getting to three four or five second exposures that you can do then i usually turn the lighting trigger off and just go to just shooting with um, an intervalometer you really use it for during the day is it um, something necessary for lighting it's not necessary you could do take a picture over and over and over during the day and hope to get lucky, but you waste your shutter and you're just filling up your memory card with stuff. So if you're really serious about a lightning trigger is the way to go. This one, Lightning Trigger 4, is the most expensive one out there, but it's the best one, at least in my opinion. I've used a couple others that have failed me continuously that they'll be pointed at lightning and not take a picture. I've seen other people use a few others that I haven't and theirs has problems too, but this one, I actually, uh, about five years ago, I didn't have this and I had a cheap one and I did a I was doing my own monsoon photography workshop teaching people how to do this and one of my attendees had bought this and she was getting lightning strikes that I wasn't because I was using a cheap one. I won't let that happen again. So this is the most expensive. The website um, I'll toss up on the video here so you can get to lightningtrigger.com. But that's basically, this is one sample of a lightning trigger, what it does and uh, what it can do for you. Now, the hardest part is settings. What kind of settings work well with this? It took me a little while to figure it out, but obviously it makes more sense that the slower your shutter speed is, the more chance you're gonna have of capturing lightning. Lightning happens so fast that if you're at one one thousandth of a second or one five hundred, you're probably gonna miss it. Your lightning trigger can fire, but you're still gonna miss it because your shutter speed is too slow. So just as a sample, my first step that I usually do is to narrow my aperture to almost the highest you can go, especially if it's really, you know, if it's pretty bright out. So F16, F22. Uh, ISO is very important, um, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But the other thing I do is put on an ND filter. If this is, if you've got whatever kind of ND filter you have, various, you know, densities to try to get your, your shutter speed even lower. I, ideally, I want to have my shutter speed around 1 60th of a second or slower. 1 25th, 1 10th, that's great. If you can do that, it's fantastic. Now, the problem is, you got your f-stop at f-22, you've got a nice ND filter on there. There's a lot of density between the lightning and your sensor. So I try to make sure my ISO is up a little bit. Sometimes, a lot of times around 200, but maybe to 400. You really want, even though you've got this slow shutter speed, you need that lightning to pop. So increasing your ISO will help with that. 
So those are kind of the basic settings that I use when I throw a lightning trigger on there. I'm gonna go through some samples of images I've shot in the settings and talk a little bit about them. So here's uh, last year at the, at the Grand Canyon. As you can see, this was hot with a 135. So I'm at F25, ISO 200, 1 13th of a second shutter speed. So great slow shutter speed. I was able to actually capture these filaments as well. So one thing that you'll see in common with all these photos I'll show you is there's still a dark background behind the lightning. Now you can be out there shooting during the day and the lightning trigger can sense the lightning, but if it's a bright background, for instance, in this photo, if this bolt had showed up way over here in this brighter area, it probably would have been a little bit harder to see. If you're shooting a scene like this where the sun isn't in shade and it's really bright, it's probably gonna make it hard to see. So even though you got a lightning trigger and you got your settings great, you still want to try to find, get close enough to a storm where it's dark enough behind it, the lightning's really going to pop and be really clear. Here's another shot, same time. It was actually a little bit before. I'm kind of going um, reverse chronological order, but this was the same spot, same shutter speed and everything. Here's a, uh, another shot from last year during my monsoon workshop. And uh, it's me in the green and this other guy. And this is just, this is a 16 millimeter Canon F22 ISO 200 and 1 40th of a second. A lot of times, you know, that ISO will depend on how close you are to the storm. We're pretty close here. Obviously with 16 millimeters, this lightning bolt is fairly close to us, probably a mile away or less. So the lightning really popped here, even at ISO 200. If it was further away, you might be at, you know, 400 to make it uh, a little bit more evident. And here's another one. Um, this one is only ISO 100, which kind of defeats what I just said before, but this is again, the 16 millimeter and this lightning bolt, as you can see, you can actually see where it's landing. It's only about a mile away or so. So it's pretty bright and it's also really dark in here. It's dark enough that you can even get this nice glow around the, the exit point of the lightning bolt. So that's why it showed up pretty well, even though it was at ISO 100. But this again, F16, 1 20th of a second, really shows slutter, show slutter speed slow, really slow shutter speed. Uh, this is the same storm just a little bit before. This one is actually kind of surprising. I'm at F8, ISO 100, and 1 250th of a second. So even though I said you really want a slow shutter speed, sometimes you'll still get lucky, especially with this lightning trigger because it's that good. But again, though, you can also see nice dark background. So the lightning really stood out against that. If, it had, if the lightning bolt had somehow come out the back of this storm and hit here, you wouldn't even see it. So that's, that's kind of why you had a lightning trigger, you got your settings, but positioning matters. You want to be able to capture that lightning in a good darker area of the storm. Here's another one. This one actually doesn't stand out as much. It's still, it's still fine, but you can kind of see it's off to the right in this clear area, and it doesn't stand out as much as if it had been right out here in front of the storm. But this is F16, ISO 100, and only one-tenth of a second. It was getting close to the end of the day, so I didn't need to, I don't even know if I had an ND filter on this one. And this is another one from last year. F8, ISO 100, and 1 80th of a second, which is a little faster shutter speed than I like, but it worked. The only thing about this, is even at ISO 100 to F8, this is actually pretty bright and almost blown out at the bottom here. So if I had my ISO up even higher, it would have been, it probably would have been a problem. But this again, this is a pretty close storm. It was right, even this is with a 60 millimeter again, this is pretty close to us. So the lightning is, was pretty intense and it's a very dark area of the storm, so it really popped. And this is just one where you can't get anywhere good, so you put your camera on your dashboard and aim it out front. 1 13th of a second, F10, ISO 200, and this bolt just struck out probably a half mile away in this field. And you can see the nice filaments here. This is still like, for whatever reason, this is kind of a bright, a bright background here, not super dark. And so the lightning really, um, you can see it really well, but it doesn't pop as it would against a nice dark background. Kind of like this one. This is one of the first shots I ever got with the trigger. And uh, you can really see how it pops against this background. There's no filaments on this one for some reason. It was a half second exposure, but sometimes out in the plains you get weird lightning strikes where it's just smooth channel and nothing else. But this one's really close. Again, just about a half mile, mile away in this field. So that's kind of a quick overview. Look at lightning sensors, lightning triggers, what they do, how you use them, some generic settings to get you started. If you still need uh, answers to questions or kind of want to know a little bit more, feel free to 
ask me in the comments below. Send me an email. My website's michaelbinsky.com. I'll have a bunch of stuff at the end of this where you can follow. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll probably be doing more of these if this one goes well and if I can uh, find the time to do it. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, really appreciate it, and we'll see you again.